Yo, what is going on, everybody? My name is Connor, but you guys can call me Superior. Coming at you, bros, with the double chem strike in domination on the map Warhawk with the Golden AK-12. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't like watching Blitz spawn trapping or just Blitz in general, um, so I thought I'd switch it up a little bit and come at you with some domination. Now, I'm not playing in a full party of six. I'm playing with two or three other people. Um, which, you know, it's kind of necessary or almost necessary to have to play with a few people um, in order to make a full game of domination last as long as it possibly can because if you play with no one and it's just you, you know, you can get cap stars in, on your team that just run around and trip cap everything because all they care about is getting the game over in a matter of 30 seconds and not being able to get any kills whatsoever. So that's why I'm playing with a few people just kind of to control the spawns, to control uh, the length of the game and just be able to help me um, get that, get the extra chem strike or the extra gun streak or whatever it may be um, to make the gameplay that much better so if you haven't tried out the AK-12 definitely slap it on is an absolute beast of a weapon N virtually no recoil amazing damage cannot recommend it enough so definitely slap that bitch on but while I think the gameplay is a pretty okay gameplay, you know, it's not the best, but it's not the worst, um, I do think it is good enough to kind of just entertain you guys in the background um, of the story I'm going to be telling. I haven't really told too many stories on my channel. I think I'm going to start telling a lot more. So I wanted to kind of kick off the story series or the story telling on my channel with a pretty good story, and that was about the time that I got arrested. Now, when I say arrested, I don't mean, like, arrested like I got handcuffed, prosecuted, put in jail for six months, and then released on bail or broke out of it and ran to Alabama and then to Mexico City for six months and lived there before the cops finally stopped looking for me and snuck back into the USA, back to Chicago where I live, and then back to my normal life. So when I say arrested, that is not what I mean. I mean, um, it's something that what I got arrest, arrest, air quotes, arrested for was something that pretty much every kid does when they're a kid, and some of them get caught, some of them don't, and that's kind of the entire point of what it is, is to not get caught. So I'm going to stop beating around the bush and give you guys a little bit of background knowledge as to what exactly, um, you know, happened. So uh, me and my buddy, expert... <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys know who that is. He's in a lot of my gameplays, and if you've ever joined one of my Xbox Live parties, you've probably been introduced to him. So, um, anyway, he was he was spending the night at my house, and normally whenever he spends the night at my house, you know we have our we have our gaming setup where I have my monitors for my computer and for my Xbox, and then he brings over his own Xbox, and I set him up with the TV and everything, and then we'll just play pubs or game battles or whatever we feel like doing. So anyway, we were just doing that um, like a normal night, and we just got a little bored. You know, we were we gotten bored of playing Call of Duty. We were like, wow, you know, this is you know nothing's going our way. We're not getting any MOA beasts because it was Modern Warfare Three was the game at the time. And, you know, we were just bored. We were exhausted from Call of Duty. Just wanted to do something else. So we kind of look at each other. You know, we go outside. We shoot hoops for a little bit, and we and we're like, you know, it'd be really fun if we went around and ding dong ditched. So. We went outside, you know, this was in like the, you know, right after the winter, um, going into the spring, so it still was a little bit chilly, so I put on this stupid yellow hat that I had with my stupid coat and everything, and you know, we go out, we're all like blacked out, you know, all hidden and ready to blend in with the night, and it's like 9.30 this time, so it's not past curfew, so we go out, you know, we hit a few houses, it's all good, we ring the doorbell, we sprint our asses down the street, you know, I'm not the fastest of all people, believe me, anyone that's seen me run can tell you, I'm not Usain Bolt on my feet, so, um, you know, it's definitely, you know, I, I can never just book it down the street and, like, to the bush on the, all the way on the other block, you know, I always have to be the one to kind of, like, go to the curb and hide behind a car whenever I ring the doorbell, because I can't make it out of there in time, um, so, yeah, that's what we were doing, um, you know, we got, like, through, like, seven houses before we finally came to this one house, and, you know, we rang the door, but we booked it, we did our thing, and, um, you know, we decided to call it a night, and we did enough, because no one was really, like, coming and looking out their window and everything, um, so we decided to kind of walk back home, and there, I was walking kind of down the main street in the neighborhood, like, the one that you go down, and then there's, like, little turns off of it that branch off into, like, littler streets that all the houses are on, you guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about, if you do, you know, stick with me, so we're walking down this main street, and all of a sudden we see some car coming down the street, and, um, we notice as it gets closer where you can start to see, like, the, the cops like the lights on top of the car they're not like going on like flashing and everything but you know you can notice that there is a bar of lights and so we're maybe we're just you know obviously we're a little bit paranoid at that time like oh all right well it's not past curfew and as long as no one called the cops because they saw us ding dong ditching or 
you know, called the cops because people were ding dong ditching, then we shouldn't really have a problem. Um, so the cop continues to drive past us, and we're like, Phew, okay, we dodged a bullet there. And then we started to walk back home talking about Call of Duty or whatever it is we were talking about at the time. But the cop turns around, which we didn't see because we turned the corner onto the little side street on where I lived. And, um, you know, he, 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 you know, he turned around, he came back, he saw where we turned down the street, and he came right down, and he pulled up next to us, and he gets out of the car, he's like, yo, were you boys ringing doorbells and running away? Like, he didn't call it ding-dong ditching, like, I thought ding-dong ditching was a pretty universal term that everyone used, but apparently, if you're a cop, you have to say the official, like, what it was, like, ringing doorbells and running away before the answer, it's sort of like, um, yeah... And um, from there, it was basically just, you know, we asked us some more questions where we were from, if, you know, who was spending the night at whose house. And so we're just sitting there like shaking in our boots like, oh, shit, we're going to get arrested. I'm, I don't want to get raped in prison. So, you know, we were, we were scared pretty much shitless because at the time we were in like seventh grade and didn't really have a clue in the world as to what was actually happening. So, um, you know, eventually we got in the cop car after he got all our information. He asked where we lived, and it was pretty weird sitting in the back of the cop car because, like, the buckle in the seat, like, I don't remember it exactly, but you couldn't undo it. Like, the cop needed to undo it for you and, like, buckle you in and everything. We didn't get handcuffed or anything, but apparently it's just, like, their official procedure or anything that they have to go because, you know, for all he knows, we could have, like, guns and stuff on us, which we didn't. You know, the worst we would have had on us was, like, airsoft guns, which, you know, against a bulletproof vest, I don't think would really do too much, much except for the cop would turn around and, like, laugh at you, like, ha, nice airsoft gun you know, might suck my bulletproof vest. So, you know, that's my big arrest story. We came home and, um, you know, my dad was there watching TV and he comes out and like talks to the cop and me and my friend are just sitting at the kitchen table, just like, Oh, Oh, when he gets back in there, he's going to, he's going to scream at us, man. It's not going to be pretty. I'm going to be grounded for the rest of my life. He just comes in and he shrugs his shoulders like, eh, you know, teenagers do what teenagers do, and then and then went back to drinking his beer and watching TV. So that that was the time that I got arrested. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm sorry for it not being what you guys probably expected it to be, like me having like a hundred pounds of crack cocaine, heroina, and stuff like that. So sorry to disappoint. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. Leave a like. If you want more stories like this, follow me on Twitter. Link will be in down in the description. Have a fantastic day, everybody. I am.